Idiots are just discovering that this war is dangerous. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. Everyone who acts like it's a new and unprecedented horror whenever Putin reminds the West that mutually assured destruction still stands is admitting that they never understood what's at stake in this proxy war and always thought this was some kind of fucking game. Oh my god, he's saying they might use nukes. Yeah, that's what happens when you start a war with a fucking nuclear-armed nation, dipshit. That's why you're a fucking moron for yelling at those of us who've, who've been calling for de-escalation and detente. Change how you are. Stop cheerleading this insane game of nuclear chicken and begin calling for de-escalation. It's so crazy how people pretend the U.S. wouldn't use nukes in response to the exact same type of attacks that Putin is warning against. Like, we all know this isn't some weird new threat that Vladimir Putin invented, right? Do we understand that this is the very reason anti-war activists have spent years warning against this exact confrontation and calling for detente instead? This shouldn't scan as something new for you. If Putin reiterating the long-standing principle of mutually assured destruction makes you freak out like something new is being said, it's because you didn't pay attention in history class. If you were previously unaware that the threat of nuclear war was baked into this proxy war from the very beginning, that just means it's time to reassess your support for this proxy war. Yes, this situation is insanely dangerous. No, that's not because of anything Putin has been saying. If you're wondering why we're seeing more war propaganda today than at any point since World War II, a big part of it is because it's going to take a tremendous amount of psychological manipulation to get people to accept the financial hardship that must inevitably befall them as part of the empire's economic warfare against Russia. Only by ungodly amounts of propaganda would people consent to having their bank accounts emptied for a U.S. proxy war that benefits them in no way and which places them at greater and greater risk of nuclear annihilation. A truly free and liberal society would not use propaganda, censorship, and information ops to manipulate the way the public thinks about a war. But if you criticize the way the Western Empire is using those exact measures, you get a bunch of liberals defending their use. Pretty wild how the U.S. State Department stopped publishing its annual transparency reports about U.S. government arms trafficking right when the U.S. government began pouring billions of dollars into proxy warfare campaigns. Watch all the right-wingers who've been stomping on women's rights at home transform into a bunch of bra-burning feminists over women's rights in Iran. One of the craziest things happening in the world today is the way weapons manufacturers are allowed to pour money into corrupt think tanks who go on to directly influence the foreign policy and military budget decisions of the most powerful war machine that has ever existed. War profiteers being allowed to successfully and very effectively lobby for more war is not morally different from slaughtering human beings at an industrial scale and selling their organs. The only difference is the way the money gets made. If you kill people and sell their bodies, you'll be called a monster. But if you kill the same number of people for the same amount of money via weapons industry profits and weapons industry lobbied wars, you'll be called an industrious job creator. This is allowed to continue because the U.S. empire is fueled by human blood. It's a symbiotic relationship. Neither the arms industry nor the empire can live without war, so any amount of corrupt lobbying for murder and destruction is not just tolerated, but warmly welcomed. It turns out it's impossible to get the world to unite under a single power structure without violence and the threat thereof, so it's only natural that an empire where there's no clear separation of corporation and state would see war profiteers knit themselves into state power. Future generations, if there are future generations, will scarcely be able to believe that it was once legal for corporations which directly profit from war and militarism to insert themselves into key points of influence and lobby successfully for more war and militarism. 
People ignore politics because they perceive, correctly, that neither of their country's two mainstream political factions cares about them, and because they perceive, incorrectly, that those two mainstream political factions are the only possible framework for political action. A tremendous amount of perception management has gone into getting people to buy into the absurd delusion that not only can status quo politics be used to change the status quo, but that it's the only way to change the status quo. People stop ignoring politics when they learn there's a whole meaningful reality underneath that delusion. That is when the apolitical majority becomes political. When their eyes open to the fact that A, things are fucked, B, the political system is rigged to make sure they stay fucked, and C, that the political system is irrelevant because we vastly outnumber those who run it. Humanity taking another step toward world war between nuclear superpowers is as good a time as any to reassess our priorities in life. What we think about, what we talk about, what we speak about, where our attention gravitates, where we place our political energy, how we spend our time on this earth, and with whom. Anyone who is interested in a sincere relationship with reality must take seriously the possibility that this could all be gone soon, and use that as a guidepost for how they spend their time and energy on this planet.